Hey everybody, um, this is Bridget Kennedy and um, I'm doing an interview today with my good friend April Langford. She has been a teacher for 16 years and currently she's a kindergarten teacher for Crockett ISD. And um, so I just wanted to do an interview with her and get a teacher's perspective on how we can cope with, you know, having our kids home more often. Um, so how are you today, April? I'm doing great. Great, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. Um, so I was hoping to start by asking you just kind of before COVID-19, what was the typical day like for you as far as like class size and flow? You know, how was life before COVID-19? Okay, um, this year I have 20 kids and mm -hmm. we would start school, go to breakfast, come to class. We'd have some morning activities. Um, we'd start out with our morning meeting. We would do some language arts activities, break for PE, come back and do some calendar activities, go to lunch, go to recess, come back and do math. Then we'd have our learning stations, our literacy labs, and then get ready to go home. Okay. Yeah. So, so it sounds like a really structured, you know, step by step, this is what's happening every day. And so now with all these stay at home or orders and, and uh, schools basically not having children coming in, what's a typical day look like now? Oh my goodness. Um, well, the way our school's doing it, like the older kids have online learning activities and some interactive teaching with our kids, especially because of the percentage that doesn't have internet and devices, um, it's strictly kind of learning packets. And mm -hmm. our our Facebook page does interactive activities with the kids. Um, there's like a little activity posted every day for them to log on and do. Um, and then I've sent parents links to different resources they can use. But as far as me interacting with the kids, it's not really happening. So, and I'm just yeah, saying. yeah. I was just going to ask you how is that impacting you? Um, you know, to not be able to see your kiddos anymore. I'm loving that the parents are getting on the school Facebook page and sharing pictures of them and videos, and they'll send me messages and stuff. But I miss the day-to-day -day life in kindergarten. So. Yeah, and my um, my stepdaughter school is doing the same thing as far as you know paper packets because you know not everybody has access to the internet. Um, to do um, those interactive activities. Um, so, you know, one of the questions I had for you is, you know, if you had any tips, you know, because right now it seems like most schools, it's kind of at the discretion of the parent as to what is going on throughout the day. And, you know, some parents are still working and stuff like that. So um, what tips do you have as a teacher that is used to, you know, classroom sizes of 20 plus, you know, how, how would you, um, God a parent, I guess, is what I'm asking as far as tips. I would say definitely set up a schedule, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be color coded, just something that works for you and your family. Maybe set aside, okay, Monday, we're going to work on this. You know, Tuesdays, we're going to work on this. And, and we have parents that are doing that. You can see at the top of their packets where they labeled on the papers, these are going to be the pages we do Monday. These are going to be the pages we do Tuesday. And that way, especially with younger kids, they can see this is all I've got to work on. I can handle this because if you give them too much at once, there's probably going to be a, a breakdown. So don't overwhelm them. And also um, give them mm -hmm. a chance. Okay. A so break. I think that. Can you repeat that last piece? Because the um, because we're internet unpredictable and we're kind of both in rural areas, like it kind of cut in and out. So what was the last thing you said? The uh, to have a brain what? Um, have some kind of brain break where if you can see that they're getting tired, and we do that brain a lot break. in the classroom. Yeah, um, YouTube is amazing. If you tap in um, brain breaks, uh, dances mm -hmm. for kids. Um, Go Noodle, which there is a Go Noodle website, but if you go to YouTube, there's Go Noodle videos. Um, Jack Hartman is wonderful for kids and it's learning songs. And we do in the mornings, every morning we have, we call it our brain break. 
and or our um, dance break and it's a chance for me to tie their shoes and a chance for them <laughs> to get wiggled out and we take turns going to the bathroom and we they know every morning we do two learning songs so they don't interrupt in the lessons for me to tie their shoes or go to the bathroom they know that that's coming so if you build that into your home schedule your child knows okay i just got to do this and then i'm going to get a break i'm going to get a snack so that they don't get frustrated and overwhelmed and you don't oh, get frustrated cool. Yeah, it sounds like it's kind of a brain break for everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's cool. Um, and the and you know if you Google brain break, are there also like activities for older kids too? Because you know even older kids. Probably, need to break. Yeah, probably okay. so. I mean, mine always includes you know for kids, um, but there's probably thing. I mean, I know that um, just dance the video games. A lot of people have uploaded yeah. the dances. So the high school kids would like that. I mean, or let them, you know, take a break and check social media or just something that they enjoy doing and then come back to their work. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that's a really cool idea. And I'm planning to implement that myself, <laughs> you know, with my <laughs> kids. So that, that's pretty that's pretty cool. Are there any other activities um, that you recommend uh, even outside of the learning piece of it, you know, just um, activities to help families kind of connect or a parent child activity or something like that? I would say um, puzzles, you know, um, jigsaw puzzles, books that your child enjoys that aren't necessarily related to what they're learning in school, just books that they want to read, um, word puzzles outside activities if there's a project that you as a family that have been wanting to do i know the other day a friend of mine was talking about that they, they were building a tree house together um my husband and i have been working on stuff around our house so just anything that you can say okay we're going to work on our project or we're going to work mm -hmm. on you know we're going to play barbie dolls or we're going to just do something that's normal and fun <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I like how you said, you know, even something outdoors that, you know, you can, when it's not raining, you know, you can get the sunshine. And um, I've talked to several people that are doing like little mini gardens or something, you know, just something maybe they always wanted to do, but they never did as a family because they didn't have time, you know. So that, that those are really great suggestions. Um, and then uh, what are some tips that uh, you might have for somebody like a, a parent who's maybe not used to teaching a certain thing? Um, you know, what tips would you have for them as far as like if they don't understand some of the content um, or basically from your experience, are teachers still available? You know, like if a parent's struggling to explain it to their child. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I use um, Remind as the app that I have that contacts parents and parents know no matter what time it is, they can message me. I mean, right before we started our interview, I had a parent that messaged me and asked me a question and mm -hmm. just don't hesitate to get in touch with your child's teacher because that's why we're here. And don't hesitate to reach out to other parents in the class as well, because especially if your child is friends with someone, that could give them an opportunity, you know, to say, oh, hey, you know, my mom talked to Joey's mom and, and we're all in this together versus we're the only ones trying to do this by ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. So um, just kind of even having this, even like right now, you and I having this contact, even though it's through, you know, webcam or whatever, we're still connecting. So kind of in that way, too, children can connect with one another um if exactly. they have face time or something like that yeah or even let them have homework time together say hey guys you know y'all are working on math y'all want to brainstorm together and make sure each child has their part in it but it gives them a chance kind of like at school they're getting that interaction and being able to talk to each other yeah yeah that's a great great idea because you know socialization is so important and so that's a that's a way we can kind of, uh, kind of a workaround we can use uh, to keep the yeah. children connected and and uh i think my my last question was going to be about self-care you know not only for yourself as a teacher and a person but also you know for other teachers other professionals that maybe are now having to stay home that aren't used to having to stay home to do their work you know do you have any tips for that you know just in general self-care and for other teachers find something you enjoy because you have plenty of time to do it. <laughs> um, 
reach out to your colleagues when you're feeling all alone and mm -hmm. just remember that this is uncharted territory this is unprecedented yeah. and nobody's going to be perfect at it so as long as you are up and moving and and doing what you can to make the world a better place that's all that matters so yeah okay so basically just kind of finding finding what works for you which might be different for everybody and um exactly. and doing something that's nice for yourself yeah that you enjoy doing that you don't ever get the time necessarily to and to do mm -hmm. so we have plenty of time now so yeah i think I've, I've talked to several people and it's so easy to get in that trap of um thinking oh i'm stuck in the house and I'm, i can't go anywhere and it's like well if we if we can change our mindset to hey this is an opportunity to do that crafting project i i've always wanted to do or you know in, in between my work i can you know uh do that um you know whatever it might be scrapbooking or or whatever um okay. it's a, if you change your mindset to it being an opportunity um it that can help you, your mood yeah that you have been given this time to do these things that you have put off and even like if you do have a set schedule where you have to work from home set a timer say okay i'm going to do this much work and when the timer goes off oh it's time for a break and then set a timer for your break and then go back to work. I mean, or make a list of things. These are the things that I wish I had time to do and then check them off as you finish it. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Corona bucket list. So that way you're, you're yeah. utilizing your time. I like that. I'm probably going to implement that myself. <laughs> I'm that, that's trying, a really great so. suggestion. I'm, I think I'm going to do it myself. Because <laughs> sometimes I'll be working on something, you know, work related, and then it's like I'm like, whoa, it's been four hours. <laughs> but if I set a timer, maybe I won't get. Uh, I'll have that little, as you called it, brain break, you know, where I can do something different and then come back to it with a fresh mindset. So I really like that. Um, and uh, one, one just kind of. Final question. I, I don't think I told you I was going to ask you this, but it's something I thought about before we started this interview was I know that your dream job you, you've said on, you've mentioned several times would be to be like a professional organizer. And, you know, some people do have some extra time now and maybe they want to organize a closet or, you know, their bath, you know, their, their bathroom or what, whatever it might be. Do you have any tips for that? You know, just um, for people to use this time also to get organized since they are home more. Um, and I've, I've been trying to work on it myself um, because I have a home office and we've lived here six years and I, my excuse was I never had the time and now I can't use that as an excuse. So um, just take it piece by piece. I mean, don't look at it as a whole project. Look at it as, okay, today I'm going to work on this section. Oh, I lost you. Let's see if you come back. Okay, there you are again. <laughs> I don't okay, know if I that think, was mine. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, I they cut out. So I think we missed probably about the last 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure either if it's if it's your internet or mine, but I think we missed about 30 seconds of that. But what I did catch is you said to not get overwhelmed, take it piece by piece. Um, you know, don't try to overwhelm yourself by just looking at the whole project. Like if like if one of your closets is a total mess and, or disaster, just piece by piece, you know, <laughs> is that kind of what you were saying? Uh, yes. And also like in the, for example, a closet, take everything out of it. I mean, yeah, you're going to have a mess, but if you have kind of a place where you could put everything and then look at each item and say, okay, where's the permanent home of this object going to be? Is it going to stay in this closet? Is it, can I decorate with it? Or does it need to go in a garage sale box or donate box? Or, and that's kind of what mm -hmm. I've been doing with all my stuff is, do, you know, I've held on to this and I forgot I had this. Is it really worth keeping or can I finally let it go? So, cause a lot of times we're attached yeah. to the memory that the object reminds us of not the na necessary object. So yeah so you can kind of have the time to to process each, each object as you're going through it so yeah. yeah that's something i thought of right before we started this interview i was like hey maybe she has some tips on organizing because yeah. it could that could be another project people can get into is organizing things and yeah. trying to get closets or whatever else into order that they've been wanting to 
um, maybe doing that in between work they have to do or whatever else, other responsibilities they have. So, um, well, April, are, is there, are there any final statements, tips, anything that, that you wanted to, to let everybody know about before we um, say goodbye? Um, just hang in there. And even though there are times that it feels like it, I promise you, you're not alone. We are all here. We're just in our houses. So if you get lonely, call a friend or get mm -hmm. on the computer and do an interview with them. <laughs> so. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much for being here. And, and I know, um, kind of a, a catch slogan I've been seeing around is that we're alone together, you know, and, and, that, I, and I, I agree with you hundred percent. We're all still here. We're alone in our homes, but we're doing that all together. So, um, so thank yeah. you so much for your time. And, um, uh, are you okay if anybody sends any questions or anything about this interview or wants to know more about tips you've talked about? Are you okay? Uh, with, yeah, absolutely. With, you know? Okay, great. All yeah, right. Well, thank you so much. Even with, with homework stuff with kids, cause I've taught up to second grade. So if, you know, probably not fourth and fifth grade beyond, but if they do have any questions about any schoolwork, I'm willing to help. So. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much, April. And thank you again for your time and, and taking the time out of your day to do this interview. And I know it was, some of these tips were helpful for me, so I hope that they're helpful for other people too. Um, so thank you so much, everybody, for watching and have a great rest of your day. Okay. Good to see you.